It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 1274, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy Friday, and welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. You send in the questions, and I answer them for you. And make sure to stick around until the end. In addition to the usual methods, I have a new, pretty cool way you can send in a question to me. I'll tell you more about that after the Q&A. So for now, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Hello, please can you share the main causes of having gray hair at an early age, like white hair at an early age? Thank you. Thank you so much for your question, Ty. This question is personal to me too. I still remember when I was about 10 or 11 years old, my dad took me to his barber. It was a Sunday afternoon outing, just me and my dad. Now, my dad was loyal to his barber. He had been using him for decades. So even though my family had moved out of the city, we still drove about 30 minutes one way to get to his go-to barber shop. Now, at some point during my haircut, the barber said to my dad, hey, Gil, your son must be stressed out. He's already got some gray hair. Now, it didn't really bother me at the time. I was 10 or 11 after all. Didn't really affect me. But by the time I got to high school, there were a few more gray hairs that popped up. They weren't super obvious, but if you spent more than a few seconds staring at the back of my head, you could spot a few glistening in the sun. That's when my friends started to notice. They would say, dude, you've already got some gray hair. I would say, I know, and thanks for noticing. I would then tell them that they probably have some gray hair too. It's just easier to see on my head because my hair is jet black. So, you know, the contrast was more noticeable. It was funny to watch them squirm when I said that. You could see their wheels spinning. Even though at the time I was just making stuff up to get my friends off the topic of my prematurely graying hair, it turns out that I was kind of sort of right. I'll explain. Researchers have found that there are some racial or ethnic groups that are more likely to experience premature graying. First, I should mention that globally, most people start to experience some graying of their hair around age 45, but in certain racial and ethnic groups, it may start sooner. Studies have found that those of Caucasian descent are more likely to experience early graying. Asians are next in line, followed by those of African descent. In fact, because this trend is so well known, dermatologists or medical doctors that specialize in skin disorders have different age cutoffs for each racial or ethnic group when determining if someone is experiencing quote-unquote premature graying. So in those with Caucasian heritage, someone would be considered prematurely graying if they experienced this before the age of 20, in Asians before the age of 25, and in those with African heritage before the age of 30. So there seems to be a genetic component to early graying. If a first-degree relative, like your mother, father, brother, or sister, experienced early graying, you're more likely to experience it too. So if you find that your hair is turning gray before some of these age cutoffs, it could be genetic. There's always that evolutionary question though, right? What possible survival advantage does having gray hair have? Well, there's an interesting theory. Theory is that gray hair grows faster than normal hair and tends to provide more insulation. So gray hair may have led to a survival advantage for trapping heat on our heads. Now, when it comes to premature graying, Scientists have also discovered that there may be something else going on. For example, there are underlying medical conditions that could be contributing to premature graying. Some autoimmune conditions can cause it, like certain thyroid conditions. There's also a syndrome called Werner's syndrome that leads to premature aging. Werner's syndrome is rare though. But either way, a medical workup is probably a good idea just to eliminate any underlying conditions. Now, we know the reason our hair, and skin for that matter, has color is because of a pigment called melanin. In some people, harmful compounds called free radicals start to build up in the scalp. These free radicals damage the cells that produce our skin and hair pigment, melanin. Damaged melanin cells means less pigment produced, which can lead to graying of the hair. So what can cause the buildup of these free radicals? Well, it turns out smoking cigarettes is highly related to premature graying. Smoking cigarettes exposes the body to lots of free radicals, and these free radicals can build up in the scalp, damaging the cells that produce melanin. Exposure to ultraviolet radiation 
can also lead to the same effect. Basically, overexposure to sunlight. But other than these two risk factors and some underlying condition like I mentioned, there doesn't seem to be any other strong lifestyle connections to premature graying. You've probably heard claims that psychological stress may turn your hair gray. That's what my dad's barber said about me. Well, that's still being studied. Early last year, a study was published that showed psychological stress seemed to promote more gray hair. In mice, humans are different than mice. So again, more studies are needed to determine whether stress, and also diet and exercise patterns for that matter, are actually related to premature graying. So what should we do? Whether you're already experiencing premature graying or want to slow down the process, quitting smoking and avoiding excess sun exposure can be helpful. Reducing sun exposure could include wearing a hat when you go outside, of course, but you could also apply sunscreen to your hair and scalp. Some shampoos also contain ultraviolet blockers, so it may be worthwhile to discuss those with your dermatologist. Other than that, when it comes to the main cause of premature graying, we can blame our genetics. I'm sure you know we've all been sold a lie by the weight loss industry that weight equals health. The number on the scale has become so powerful that it defines how people feel and think about themselves. But that's not an accurate reflection of true health. That's why we love using FitTrack's Dara Smart Scale. For me, health isn't about weight. It's about consistency. With FitTrack's Dara Smart Scale, I can track my body's changes and stay accountable. And it's great for families too because it recognizes up to eight different accounts and even has infant mode to track a baby's weight. Stop measuring weight and start measuring health with FitTrack. Go to fittrack.com slash OHD to take 50% off your order. Plus, for a limited time, you'll also save an additional 30% with code BUILD30 at checkout. That's F-I-T-T-R-A-C-K dot com slash OHD to save 50%. Plus, get an additional 30% off your order with code BUILD30 at checkout. Don't miss out on this amazing limited time offer. fittrack.com slash OHD with code BUILD30 at checkout. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, we have another great way you can submit your own question to me directly. If you're listening on Spotify, right there in your app on this episode screen, you should now be able to see my prompt asking if you have a question. Go ahead and reply right there with the question you'd like me to answer here on the show. This is a cool new feature from Spotify. So if you're not listening there, now's the perfect time to check it out. I thank you so much in advance for sending me your questions. Thank you so much for listening every day. Thank you for listening all the way through. Thank you for sharing this show with someone. I hope you have a great start to your weekend and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.